Welcome to Dashway Talks, a show powered by Dashway Consulting, a China-based strategic market research company founded in 2010. Hi, I'm Jess. I'm an order manager from Design Shiro and Associates. We are a professional service firm providing all kinds of market entry, accounting, tax, legal, and other advisory services for international investors who would like to conduct business in Asia. What new information can investors expect in financial statements? The new revenue standard imposes a lot of disclosure requirements for companies, so investors would definitely expect more information from the financial statements of a Chinese company. So when you have got a financial statement which is using the new、um, CS14, the first thing you should look for is the disclosure notes about、um, accounting policies, about significant estimates and key judgment. So they would provide you with a brief description of the revenue recognition policy of the company, so that you would have a rough idea about. What kind of performance obligations are there?、Uh, when these performance, when are these performance obligations satisfied? Are there any key judgments as to when revenue is recognized? Are there any assumptions used、um, when you when the company decide determine the transaction price and variable consideration? And also, are there any uncertainties involved? You would also learn about how the transaction price is allocated to,、uh, to the performance obligations, and also I would mention: Are there any warranty provided to the cu- to the customers?、Uh, are there any key judgments? What are the key judgments when determining the amount of contract costs, and how these contract costs are amortized into、um, profit and loss? And also in the disclosure notes, there will be a disaggregation of revenue, and very often you may find a breakdown of revenue by nature or by segment or by geographic location. And also, what's new to the financial state to the balance sheet of the company's financial statements is the contract balances. Uh, so you will find a new item called contract liability, and a new item called contract asset. So, if about contract liability, so if the customer pays you the consideration before the goods or services are delivered, then the entity will record a contract liability to. Represent its obligation to deliver the goods or to perform the services to the customer. So it's something like receipts in advance or something like、um, advancements from the customers. And about contract asset. So the definition of contract asset is to record an entity's right to consideration when the right is conditional on something other than the passage of time. So, to understand this,、um, let's、um, think about example. So, imagine that you deliver a piece of machinery and provide installation services to a customer. So, when you have delivered the machinery to the customer, and the customer have obtained control of the asset, you would recognize revenue for the sales of machinery. However, Um, the contract terms may say that that the the full payment is due only after successful installation. So it means that at the point of the delivery of the machinery, your right to receive the consideration is actually conditional. It's conditional upon、um, the provision of installation service. So at that time, you can recognize only.、Um, Contract assets rather than account receivable. So that means contract assets is something conditional upon some further performance obligation you need to perform in the future. But when it comes to account receivable, it usually represents unconditional right to receive the money. So after you have successfully installed the machinery or equipment, and the customer should be 
uh, should pay you the, the, the full amount according to the contract. So at that time, the, um, the, the, the consideration will become, the right to receive the consideration will become unconditional. And you need to transfer the contract assets to account receivable. Um, and also, the new um, account, uh, the the new revenue standards um, allows companies to capitalize the contract costs. So there could be cost to fulfill a contract, which will be capitalized um, under inventory or other current assets. And also, there could be incremental contract costs, which will be included in other current assets or other other non-current assets based on their liquidity. With there already being challenges for companies trying to comply with both China GAAP standards and China's VAT system, do the new accounting standards make this challenge easier or more difficult? I think the new revenue um, standards could make it harder for the Chinese companies to comply with China's value-added tax system, the VAT system. Um, there has been a long-standing difference between the Chinese accounting standards and the value-added tax regulation in China in terms of revenue recognition. And there's usually a timing difference between accounting revenue and VAT revenue. So just to give you some background information, about why um, the VAT revenue is different from accounting revenue. So VAT revenue, or uh, sometimes um, referred to as tax revenue, is recognized as a very different point of time in order to um, regulate tax payment. So tax revenue is recognized whenever you issue a VAT invoice or um, it is recognized according to the date of payment as stipulated in the sales agreement, whichever is earlier. And if the sales agreement does not specify a date of payment, then tax liability arises when you um, sending out the goods. So, so it is entirely possible that you issue a VAT invoice way before you perform any services or deliver any goods to the customer. So even if you haven't done anything, as long as you issue a VAT invoice, you need to recognize tax revenue and your tax liability arises. So it's clear that there is nothing in the tax regulation about transfer of control of the goods or satisfying performance obligations. So you see, the VAT system is very different from the accounting standard, and that's why um, the timing difference arises. And the thing is, each month, the companies in China need to file and pay the VAT in the e-tax e filing system, and they need to report the amount of tax revenue and the amount of accounting revenue. And as I said, it's totally understandable if there are differences between these two kinds of revenue. However, when the tax revenue is substantially lower than the accounting revenue, the in-charge tax officials will be alerted. Um, what they do is that they would summon the company accountants to the tax bureau to explain and justify the difference. And then the accountants would have to prepare and um, provide some supporting documents, perhaps followed by um, several visits to the tax bureau just to explain the case to the tax officials. And uh, most, uh, and, or at least a lot of accountants in China find such tax review burdensome. So what they do is that they simply recognize revenue um, when they issue a VAT invoice so that their accounting revenue are exactly the same as the tax revenue. There will be no difference at all. But apparently this violates the accounting standards the, it violates the revenue accounting, whether the old one or the revised CS14. 
And also I find that frustrating because it significantly increases the order risks of the company um, if the company violates accounting standards simply to comply with VAT filings. And with the new revenue accounting coming to effectiveness, I think it further complicates the situation in at least two aspects. So, so if you think about it, revenue is now recognized when company satisfies the performance obligation. So you, if you have multiple performance, performance obligations, um, in one contract, and then you will have to allocate the contract price to the performance obligations and the recognize revenue separately in stages, regardless of receiving the money or issuing VAT invoice. So then you need to justify the difference between tax revenue and accounting revenue. Uh, but you need to not only provide the contract, but also explain to your in charge tax officials as to on what grounds you identified these performance obligations and how you allocate the transaction price to these performance obligations. In other words, you will have to justify your judgments to the tax bureau. And so this is one aspect. And another aspect is that um, the amount of revenue recognized could be very different from the contract price, from the consideration as um, stated in the contract, because there could be variable considerations. Again, you need to explain and justify the difference to the tax officials. And remember that the variable consideration is based on the expected value or the most likely amount. So it's an estimated figure when you record accounting revenue. So it means that it's highly likely that you will need to adjust the revenue again when you got actual sales returns or you provide actual discounts to your customer. And that would potentially give rise to another kind of difference in, in tax revenue and accounting revenue again. So I think Applying the new revenue accounting will pose some additional challenges for companies in China. Um, and companies need to really think about how to comply with both the VAT regulation and accounting standards at the same time. Any questions? We will find an expert to answer them. Drop your questions in the comments or send us an email, dx at dashwayconsulting.com.